In this video, we're going to talk about what's the difference between experimental probability and theoretical probability, and how do we use these probabilities to predict outcomes using proportions. So that's what we're going to talk about. Let's take an example here like a spinner. Imagine if it's evenly divided between these four sections, and we take that spinner and we spin it and we say, hmm, you know, what number does it land on, right? And what's the probability that it lands on that number? Well, when you think about probability, pr probability, it's the number of successes, like what you want, divided by the total number of outcomes. And so when you do experimental probability, it's just like it sounds, you know, it's like you're running an experiment. Let's say, for example, I, I spun the spinner a <laughs> uh, hundred times, right? And let's say it came up uh, on the number one, mm, 23 times. So we would say our experimental probability is 23 successes, which was what we were looking for, getting a one, out of 100 trials, you know, basically 100 spins, okay? Now, in theory, okay, assuming that the spinner is what they consider uh, fair, meaning like it's not, it doesn't stick at any particular section on this spinner, or maybe these uh, regions are all the same size, you know, assuming this is like a balanced and, and fair spinner, in theory, what's the probability that we land on one? Well, what we do is we look at the number of successes there are, which in this case, it would just be a one uh, possible way of getting what we want out of one, two, three, four possible outcomes. So we would say, theoretically, the probability is one out of four. Now, what's interesting is, say we only spun the spinner like three times, right? it's quite possible it could land on one three times in a row. I mean, you know, you run an experiment, you say, oh, I got three ones and three uh, spins, and so, oh, my probability is one, meaning it's like 100%, meaning it always happens, which was only three spins, right? So it's probably not very accurate, not very reflective of what the actual probabilities are. And so what we can do is when we look at the theoretical probability, again, making some assumptions that this is a fair spinner, we might say to ourselves, could we predict if we were to spin the spinner like um, 10,000 times, what, what would be the number of uh, times that it would land on the number one? So our expected number of ones, right? Well, here's where we can use a proportion. We can use our theoretical probability of one fourth, and we can say that we get one successful outcome for every four spins roughly, okay? That's the, the idea. So we say if we were to spin this 10,000 times, how many ones would we expect to get? And so you make a proportion. It's like the successes out of the total equals the successes out of the total. And you can do this a couple different ways. You could say four times what equals 10,000. And whatever you multiply the denominator by, you multiply the numerator by, that's one way to solve proportions. Another way that students sometimes like is to do the cross product. So you would multiply in the diagonal. You'd say four times x is four x is equal to 10,000 times one which is 10,000, and then you can solve for x by dividing by four, and so you can see x is coming out to 2,500. Now, this is a sufficiently large number of spins, so you're gonna notice that the uh, experimental probability is gonna start to approach the theoretical probability, assuming that this is a fair spinner. Again, like we did this first example, we spun it just three times, you might get all ones, but that's not, uh, probably typical, and you'll start to see as this goes up to 10,000, 100,000, a million spins, it will start to approach that one-fourth or 0.25 probability. So I hope this helped clarify a little bit about a probability. I'll put another video right there if you wanna learn more, and I'll see you over in that video.